What's up guys, it's Professor Pew Pew here. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to play my Blood Ladder build. Now, I've shown this build on this channel before, and some people have been copying this build and doing really well with it, but some people have been, you know, trying to copy the build, but not really understanding how the build works or how it plays into certain matchups. So, in today's video, we're going to go into detail about uh, how this build works against specific counters and what you could do to like win those difficult situations and what kind of situations can you just like not win at all and need to run away from okay so the first matchup that we're going to talk about today is against druidic healers this is Probably like the most commonly asked questions that that I get about this build is how do you use this build to kill druids, and it's very easy. This is actually like probably one of the easiest builds that you can kill nature healers with, uh, and all you need to do is just change your Q to Thunder Armor, change your W to Forbidden Stat, and change your Jacket skill from Infernal Shield to Ambush. With Thunder Armor, you'll do a lot more damage than Deadly Swipe. And you need that damage to out damage the amount of uh, sustain that these nature healers get. Your W skill, Forbidden Stab, will decrease the amount of healing that your target gets by 40%. So whenever you see the Druid healer putting uh, Protection of Nature on themselves, you know they're about to heal themselves. So that's when you hit Forbidden Stab on them, and then their E will not heal them for as much. Your jacket skill ambush puts you into stealth, and this helps you against um, mercenary jacket, which the nature healers use to heal themselves when their E's are on cooldown. Right, so if you go into stealth, they can't hit you, and they won't be able to heal, and that's how you can out damage or kind of not really out damage, but to deny all of their healing and then out damage their Q's and kill them. In that little clip there, you saw me killing Dream Thief with this build, and Dream Thief is the top ranked nature player on the Infamy ladder board. So if I can kill Dream Thief with this build, then you should probably be able to kill any nature player with this build. Now keep in mind that the Assassin Jacket skill is useful for more than just mercenary jackets. You can use the Assassin's Jacket skill to counter some of these really long lasting defensives or even offensive buffs. For example, in this case, we're waiting out the uh, this guy's uh, soldier armor. He's playing a um, soldier armor claymore, and when he turned on soldier armor, I just go into stealth and waited until the soldier armor was gone, and then I came out of stealth and killed him. Another really common matchup in Corrupted Dungeons is Light Crossbow. Light Crossbows are really popular right now because the top ranked player, DM Rekt, uses a Light Crossbow Kite build that is really effective and really versatile against a variety of builds. So against Light Crossbow players, there's, um, there's sometimes a little bit of variation in their builds. Um, you need to. The most important thing that you need to look for is their helmet. If they're using Cultist Cal, you can counter the Cultist Cal by using your Hunter Hood. If they put Cultist Cal on you, you turn on Hunter Hood and then you spam skills. The Cultist Cal's damage will be reflected back at them, so it'll kill them faster. Uh, in this case, I am fighting against a person using not only a Coldest Cal, but also a Cleric Robe. The Cleric Robe kind of prevents me from reflecting all of the Coldest Cal's damage back, uh, but he did still get hit by a good chunk of his own damage when he put Coldest Cal on me, and then I turned on Hunter Hood. Another thing is when you're fighting against kiting builds like Light Crossbow, don't be afraid to use your E right off the bat for a gap closer and some opening damage. Because by the time that you get them low enough for you to execute with your E, your E will probably be back off cooldown anyway. And when you're build checking people, look for hard block skills like Parry Strike, Soldier Helmet, or Assassin Shoes. 
And if you see that they have any of these skills, make sure you don't use your E the moment they fall to 40%. Because if you do that, you'll be very predictable. A lot of people will save their block skill for, for when they fall down to 40% and will block your execute damage with, on your E. And that's going to be a lot of damage taken away from you. Now in this specific fight, my opponent played very poorly and he never used his soldier helmet at any point during the fight. And when he got to 2 bars of HP and low enough for me to execute, Instead of using his block, he animation locked himself with a silence. And when I saw him casting that silence, I knew that he wouldn't be able to use soldier helmet because of the animation and because of the global cooldown. So I went in for the execute and I killed him. When you're fighting against melee builds that don't try to kite you, make sure you switch your Q to Thunder Armor. This will give you a lot more damage than Deadly Swipe. In this fight, I'm fighting against a person using my exact same build, but he was 8.3 and I was 8.1 overcharged. So he had the IP advantage on me, but because I changed my skill before the, he engaged, I was able to just trade damage with him face to face and end up killing him despite the gear disadvantage. And also keep in mind that because your W is an iframe, you, you can use it early to block some of their opening skills, and this will give you an even bigger lead to make sure that your opponent gets down to below 40% before you do. Another build that people have issues against is uh, Double Mercenary Curse players. Against Double Mercenary Curse, you need to check their W skill. If they're using Grudge, you need to just run away from them because you can't kill them. But if they're using Desecrate, then you can try to fight them by switching your W to Shadow Edge. Because Shadow Edge gives you a longer duration iframe that allows you to block the Curse player's E skills. And without their E skills, you can actually out damage them if all they have is Mercenary Jack Hit and, um, and Q to proc it, if they don't have Grudge to proc their Jack Hits, basically. Now, I said earlier that against Mercenary Jack Hits, it helps to run a Assassin Jack Hit if, uh, to like turn on your Assassin Jack Hit going to Stealth, but that doesn't work against Curse because they're dot based. Once their dots are on, are on you, even if you go into stealth, they'll still be healing. So when you're fighting Curse, stay on Infernal Shield. The Hallowfall Holy build is a build that you absolutely have to run away from. Now against most builds in Corrupted Dungeons, you can at least try to put up a fight, like try to fight them, see if you can win, and see if you can maybe like outplay them on mobs or something. But against Hallowfall, you have no chance. You need to just run away from them. And it's very important when you're facing Hallow Falls that you switch your W skill to dash before they put you in combat. Because if you stay on Chain Slash or, um, well, if you have a lot of mobs, you can use Shadow Edge too. But if you are on Chain Slash, you have no chance of getting away from a Hallow Fall. You'll just die. Uh, Hallow Fall actually has way more mobility than Blood Ladder without dash. Their E skill is a 12 second cooldown with their, uh, with their cooldown reduction food and offhand. It's a 12 second cooldown, a iframe, and a knockup. So if you don't change your W to dash fast enough, you will actually just get chased down and die to them. And you have no chance to fight against them either because they have a knockback on their W that has also like nearly no cooldowns, like 6 second cooldown or something like that. So it, like every time you dash onto them, they will just knock you back or jump away from you and keep kiting you and smiting you. And if you try to run away from you, they have a dash that is on a 15 second cooldown, which is you know, way faster than your 30 second cooldown one. Uh, so they'll just chase you down and kill you. Right? So against Hallow Falls, the moment that you seize a Hallow Fall, you switch a dash and you'll run away from them. Against one hand dagger players, you need to change your jacket skill to ambush. When they turn on their E and they try to engage onto you, you can go into ambush and when you're stealth, they can't hit you so they won't be healing off of you. And if they stay, uh, if they keep their E on, they'll just be not hitting you and just be losing health. So they need to turn it off. And when they turn off their 
uh, their E skill, you can engage onto them and uh, fight them. Your Hunter Hood, of course, also helps against their E's. And a lot of the times when you uh, when they engage onto you, you turn on your Hunter Hood, they'll just start running away. And then when their E's come back off of cooldown, they're going to try to re-engage on you. And that's when you use your Assassin Jacket to go into stealth and wait out their E. And then once their E is off cooldown, you can go back on them again. Now, One Hand Dagger is a build that relies heavily on resets. So after you use your two defensive skills, uh, they'll get low and they'll probably just run away like this guy is doing right now. And if you're ch when you're chasing these people when they're low health, make sure you don't overcommit. Sometimes they may look like they're low HP, but if they have their E up, they can easily re-engage onto you and just heal up with their auto attacks. So if you don't have your defensives up, uh, don't overcommit when you're chasing them. The one hand dagger build that this player is using is also a little bit outdated. Nowadays, most people use a one hand dagger with Luring Cane and Royal Helmet and Demon Cape. Uh, this guy is using a Demon Helmet and Bridge Watch Cape, so he doesn't even have the damage to like completely one burst me anyway. If you're fighting against one of the more deadly versions of uh, one hand dagger, the ones that are using Royal Helmet and Demon Cape, you also need a piece of food called, uh, I think it's called Frost Peak Dead Eye. It's a fish. And what it does is it reduces the uh, CC duration that you receive by, I think, 30% or something like that. It reduces CC duration on you. So that, that means when they W you and then chain to a um, Royal Helmet, they won't have enough stun duration to like change it change the two stuns like perfectly together and that allows you to turn on your defensive in between their two stuns okay so that's what you need against those builds against one hand frost and chill how players you need your w on shadow edge shadow edge is a 22 meter engage skill that makes it very hard for frost players to kite you now Against Frost players, it's kind of a 50-50 skill matchup because the Shadow Edge is a skill that you can sidestep and dodge. So when you're using this skill, make sure that you know if you're using it at a really long range, if you miss, you need to start running the other way right away. Uh, because if you miss that skill, you don't have a good engage. They can then like come back onto you and start throwing cues at you and hide you out. But as long as you can keep landing those Ws and you keep staying on top of your target, you should be able to just chase down these Frost players. Now, specifically against Chill House, not really against One Hand Frost, but specifically against Chill House, because the damage on their E is delayed, you can iframe out of it with your W, or you can reflect it. Sometimes when you out, uh, when you like iframe out of their E with your W. It will still stun you, but it won't do the damage to you, which is a pretty big deal because that E does get pretty hard. And if you uh, sometimes you do this to them a couple of times, they'll know that you're gonna hit them with a W when they eat you. So they'll st step to the side and try to dodge your W. If this happens, you can also turn on your reflect to reflect the E's damage back at them. Another thing is when you're using your reflect, uh, try to do it while they're in the middle of a Q animation. Um, that way you're guaranteed to get at least one hit of uh, reflected damage at them. If you just like if you just turn on your reflect and walk at them, then they will just stop casting at you and you'll be wasting your reflect. So wait until they are in the middle of a Q animation before you use that reflect skill. Fights against frost players are usually really long and really tedious, so just make sure that you don't lose your patience against them. If something goes wrong, like if you miss a W or some something, just turn around and go for a reset. If you lose your patience and you over-engage, like if you uh, burn your boot skills early or something, then you won't have the ability to reset when you get low, and 
uh, that's also what they want you to do. If you over engage onto them, they will be able to kite you out with all of their slows and stuns and teleports. So that will make it very bad for you. Just don't over engage and wait for them to make the mistake, and then capitalize on that. Like for example, in this fight, I had to kind of restart the fight a couple of times when I missed my Ws. But then on that last one, when he stood still, traded damage with me, and hit my re hit onto my reflect a few times, that's when I knew I could have uh, just run run him over at that point. Uh, so when he makes a mistake like that, uh, that's when you just spend all of your skills onto uh, chasing and you run him down. Now all all this is only against cloth frost players. If you're playing against a plate frost, you should probably just run away from them because plate frost can kite really well and unless they like really screw up against you, you shouldn't be able to kill them. And if you chase them too hard, you'll probably run out of mana before they do because the uh, the dagger cues now cost so much mana. So against plate frost, you should probably just run away from them. When you're fighting against bowcasters, you need to change your W to Shadow Edge and your jacket skill to Ambush. Ambush puts you into Stealth, and Stealth cancels out the channel of Deadly Climax, the bowcaster E. So that way you'll have two skills here to use against their E skill. You have your Hunter Hood, which reflects their E back at them, and you have your Ambush, which cancels out their E's channel. Your W Shadow Edge can also be used for this, but it's mainly going to be used for engaging onto them. Because ballcasters, just like light crossbows, they tend to run their Q2, and they will try to like kite you out with their Q2 before they channel that climax on you. So you can't let that happen, right? You need to just like jump right on top of their face and not let them go. If you if you have chain slash and you just like slowly walk towards them because chain slash, chain slash has a really short range, so uh, by the time that you get into range for chain slash, you probably got hit by like four, five, maybe even six Qs already, and that's gonna put you at a huge disadvantage. If you take that much damage before they start channeling their uh, deadly climax, then they might just uh, silence you when you get on top of them and then just one shot you with their E. So you don't want that to happen. So you run Shadow Edge to engage and then uh, use your jacket and helmet skill to deal with their E. Now, because the Ballcaster build relies on that kiting at the very beginning, you need to be very patient with them, just like the Frost build. You need to make sure you don't take too much damage. Um, if you took too much damage before you engage onto them, you need to reset the fight. Or if you engage onto them, but they hit you with a silence and an E before you can pop your defensive, you need to reset the fight. If you burn your defensives and they're not even close to being dead yet, you need to reset the fight. All right, so just keep in mind that the ballcasters can just silence and then basically one shot you. Right, so you don't really want to take the chance. That chance, you want to make sure that you only fight them when the odds are stacked against them when you have your defensives and you're on like on top of them so they can't fight once you get on top of them like if you land a really clean shadow edge and you're like right on top of them you need to kind of walk in circles around them to prevent them from hitting you with a silence the silence is a channel skill so uh you see that animation coming and if you are in a position where you can't dodge it you can try to hit your hunter hood before the silence actually lands right because they do have a channel time and then the projectile time so you can get your hunter hood up before um the silence actually hits you and if you do that they won't be able to eat you and you can still fight them now against a good player engaging onto them is actually pretty hard you can see in this clip I tried several times and I always ended up either taking too much damage or failing my defensives. And also the guy that I'm playing against, he's aware that I'm trying to dodge his uh, silence. 
So he keeps canceling his silence to kind of fake me out, right? So it's actually kind of hard sometimes. But one way you can make it easier is you can throw a W, miss it on purpose, and then walk away from them. When you do this, they will think that your W is down, and they will try to engage onto you. When they're chasing onto you, it makes it easier for you to land your next W, which is what I did here to kill this guy. And the last thing we're going to talk about here is Black Hands. Black Hands is actually the most tedious build for us to fight against. This is even more tedious than uh, fighting against the Kiting builds because Black Hands is a anti-melee burst build, right? And you're playing a melee weapon, so they kind of anti you. Uh, so there's two things that you can do against Black Hand players that would help you, uh, help you win against them, but it takes a lot of patience to, to pull this off. And the number one thing is uh, you need to change your jacket to ambush to cancel out their hellion shoes. And the second thing is you need to know that your W uh, can also help you against their hellion shoe when they come out of their stealth. Like when they pop out of stealth and start dashing towards you with hellion shoes, uh, you can use your W to kind of swap pace places with them. And uh, that's going to help you prevent a lot of their burst. Use your W against their Hellion shoe. This is what you need to do. When you see them Hellion you, you put your cursor at the edge of the circle of your W's range, and you spam W. And when they come out of their Hellion shoe, like when they start dashing towards you with Hellion shoe, for a second there, they will be visible and targetable. And if you place, if you can guess which direction they're coming from, and you place your cursor along that way, then when they hellion you, uh, they they're guaranteed to like pass through where your cursor is. And when they pass through your cursor, because you're spamming W, you'll just like iframe to them right away, and they will continue dashing to your original location before you uh W to them. Right, so that will look on the screen like this, like you're just swapping places with them. And when you do this, you'll do damage to them and not take any damage from them. Right, So uh, you do this and then you cue the other direction to get away from them. If you can do this several times, you will soften them up enough that you can uh, kind of just tank their burst and kill them. Uh, but it takes a lot of patience because sometimes you do this a couple of times and they know, like, they will realize that their HP bar is dropping and they will stop chasing you and go for a reset. And also because Black Hands are also a dagger, uh, a dagger tree weapon, so they have the same W as you, they also have that iframe on their um, chain slash. And in this fight, uh, Jakun managed to iframe my E twice like i would soften him up soften him up with my w's and finally get him to the point where i can execute them and he just manages to w on me the moment that i tried to hit my e and i couldn't execute and um yeah so it was just like a really tedious back and forth fight but eventually i managed to kill him by getting him low enough for the execute and then hiding off of his screen in my assassin jacket stealth and because i was stealth he didn't see my e coming so he couldn't just uh execute uh, so he couldn't just iframe my execute and that's how i managed to finally kill him now in stalker dungeons which is probably where most of you guys are if you're having trouble against this black end build uh you probably won't find anybody that are going to be playing as crazy as jacken in stalker dungeons, iframing all of my E's and all that. Uh, so most of the times in stalker dungeons, you should have a pretty easy time killing these black hand builds if you just keep hitting your W's at the perfect time and uh, just dodging their burst with your W, dodging their assassin, uh, dodging their uh, hellion shoes with their assassin jacket, and wear them down to the point where you can tank their burst and uh, execute them. Alright, so that's it for this video. Now, 
I know there's more builds out there in Corrupted Dungeons than the ones that I went over, but these are the ones that I get FAQs about. So if you have more questions about other builds that you're having trouble with, just hop over to my Twitch, the link is down below, and ask me those questions when I'm live.